Hello and welcome to the fourth video in our Pixhawk 2.1 series. Now I'm very excited to say that Arduplane 3.8 came out at the beginning of August. So I've had a chance to play with it here and wait a couple of weeks for the dust to settle just to make sure there weren't any big gotchas in 3.8 and it appears that there isn't so we can crack on with this series. Now the reason that we've waited is there are lots and lots of changes in Arduplane 3.8. The main one being of course that it now supports the Pixhawk 2.1 also known as the Pixhawk Cube natively but it also does a lot of other cool stuff too. So a quick look at the release notes and you'll see all the kind of cool stuff that has been added in here. There's a new filter been added, the way that the RC inputs and RC outputs are dealt with now in things like planes have been completely redesigned, which is one of the main reasons that I've been waiting for Arduplane 3.8 to come out. There was no point continuing with the Pixhawk series before because the way that it's set up is now completely different. And this video is really to focus on one specific topic, which is how you make sure that everything's moving in the right way and the correction is too. In the next video, we'll go on and we'll actually have a look at how you set everything up and go through the calibration and get the plane ready for its first test flight. But as part of the setup and testing I've been doing here, this major change is so big that it actually warrants its own little video and I got into a real mess with this so once I'd figured it out it was worthwhile me documenting this as a separate video because I'm sure if I did it then other pilots and builders are going to make the same mistakes and get into the same stuck position too. Now the problem I was having was that I'd gone through all the setup and everything was going swimmingly and all of the manual controls were working beautifully. Uh, the ailerons, the elevator, the rudder on the V-tail, all of that stuff was set up great. But the challenge that I had is if I put it into one of the fly-by-wire or stabilize modes and then moved the craft around, hopefully you can see in the image here the corrective action for the control surface on the axis that I was having the problem with was actually moving in completely the wrong direction. If I roll the plane to the left, then the aileron on the right hand wing should pop up to arrest that roll and bring it back down. Similarly with the VTAIL for the rudder and elevator. And although everything was working in manual mode, everything was completely the wrong way around and in a right mess when I went into the stabilize or on the fly-by-wire modes. Now this probably took me a good hour, hour and a half to figure out and I had to really sit down and scratch my head. And that's because I was thinking about this as though it was a previous version of Arduplane. So let me put a quick slide up here and kind of explain exactly what was going on. So now in Arduplane 3.8 the new way of thinking about this is there are a set of controls and parameters for both the radio receiver channels or the RC inputs and that's your elevator, your aileron, your rudder and your throttle and your mode switches. All that stuff is managed in one thing with the RC map commands and RC1, RC2, RC3, RC4 and then on the other side which is where all the servos come out those RC output settings are handled by the servo 1 function, servo 2 function, etc, etc. And by configuring each of these separately, you can get both sides of the system to work in concert to give you not only the manual control and make sure that's working in the right way, but also to make sure that the stabilization and the auto correction that the Pixhawk is putting into your plane is the right way around too. And that's what was happening with me. I'd managed to get the RC input settings reasonably okay, and that was kind of working, but I really hadn't managed to get all my RC output settings working too. So let me just explain the process that I've gone through just to troubleshoot this and get it all setting up in concert. Now the thing I need to remind you here is that when you are doing the calibration, and we'll cover this in the next video, you need to make sure that the elevator is reversed. Now that's pretty common for APMs, Pixhawks, Ardu Plane, Ardu Copter, and all of the other setups that we've done so far. So you should always have that reverse tick by the pitch control and leave everything else as default. And once you've done that, then you know that the RC calibration should be okay. Now, the next thing you need to do is actually go and confirm that the servo settings 
for the rear part of the craft are actually correct. And again, this is all in the documentation. The documentation has all been updated for Ardu Plane 3.8, and it is all in there, even if it can be a little bit verbose. And if you're new, you kind of have to read it a couple of times for it to kind of sink in. Or it definitely did with me. By default, the outputs are servo one is going to be aileron, servo two, output two is going to be elevator, output three is going to be throttle and output four is going to be rudder or servo two and servo four outputs are going to be connected to either side of the v-tail and that is exactly the same as it was before but now you can actually move things around so rather than have to have the rc inputs as aileron elevator throttle and rudder uh, and then have the outputs as aileron elevator throttle and rudder and have all that matched you can mix and match them but the next thing you need to do is just go in and make sure that the servo 2 and servo 4 settings in the parameters are actually set for the V-tail, which is what I had to do here so that it was accurately mixing the rudder and the elevator channels into those two V-tail surfaces. Once I had checked that was okay, the next thing to do is then first of all figure out and make sure that the correct movement is happening in the stabilized mode. Now, normally I'd expect to tackle this from the other way around, and this is part of the problem I was having, but this was the way that actually seemed to work better. So make sure that you have one of the modes set for something like fly-by-wire A, pop the craft into that, and then rock the craft in all three axes. And what you're looking for is the control surfaces moving to counteract the uncommanded movement, roll, pitch, or yaw. Make a note of which of those is reversed and is moving in the wrong direction. And then go into the parameters inside Mission Planner and you can use the find command to look for the servo that you're interested in. And of course, with it being a V-tail, ours are servo two and servo four. So if we find all the stuff for servo two, then I can find it in here. And it, not only do we have the ability to decide what servo two is. We also have the ability to define what the medium position is so we can trim it so that it's perfectly in line and the servo arm is at 90 degrees. We have a PWM minimum and a PWM maximum and we can also reverse it at the bottom. So just work your way through each of the servos, servo one, servo two, servo three and servo four. Realistically, you're not gonna to do too much with servo three because that's the throttle but work through the rest and make sure that you write the parameters after each time you do it, rock the plane again, and make sure now that the correction is moving in the right direction. Once you've got that done, you are over the hump. Next thing to do then is pop it into manual mode and just double check that each of the controls are working in the right way as well. Now, you can either go on to the reversing function. There's that little radio button by the side of the calibration when you do the radio pieces. You can click that on if you find that that's not working properly. Or in the end, what I did is I got everything working apart from the elevator. And by accident, I actually noticed that I'd unticked the pitch reverse, the elevator reverse, which you should have set up anyway. And it finally got me there. So I just wanted to make a video specifically about this because we're not going to have time to cover it in the next video where we're going to go through the standard calibration and show how that all that works and how you do the radio, the compass, the accelerometers, how you set up the flight modes and those bits ready for the first flight because this is something that could potentially catch a lot of pilots and builders out. So remember, as of Ardu Plane 3.8, there are two lots of things that you have to deal with. Whereas before you only had four settings that you tried one after the other, and they were called RC1, RC2, RC3, RC4, if you remember those, if you played with RD Pilot in previous versions, forget about all that now. Treat the RC inputs and the RC outputs as two separate things. If you get in a bit of a muddle, my tip is make sure that the RC outputs are all configured properly, get those working in the right direction, in a stabilized mode to correct the uncommanded movement and then pop it back in a manual flight mode and just make sure that the radio is moving in the right direction and if you have to then you can reverse those there if all else fails you can always reverse the pieces on the radio but i wouldn't recommend that i try and do it through the graphical user interface first part of the reason that i had this problem last comment is i think that 
I didn't blow away the configuration of the previous version of Arduplane before I popped Arduplane 3.8 on the chassis. And I think what happened was the Pixhawk tried to interpret my 3.7 settings and it got me into part of this problem because the VTEL was still set up in the new Arduplane 3.8. I didn't have to go and manually configure that. But I do think it copied some of the other parameters across from the previous installation that got me into this problem. So my recommendation, and I'll talk about this in the next video too, is I would export your parameters from the previous version of Arduplane if you're already running a Pixhawk with Arduplane 3.7.2 or whatever number you're using. I'd save your parameters down, and then when you come to flash it, I'd flash it with something like Ardu Rover, back up and delete the SD card, and then I'd flash it with Arduplane. That way you're guaranteed you're not going to be picking up any problems from the previous installation because so much has changed. And then you can you use the compare function to just double check and put in all of those extra pieces that you may have configured for additional auxiliary channels or whatever into the new Arduplane 3.8. So apologies if that's a slightly technical one this early in the series, but this is something that I've only just kind of got my head around and figured out, and it's worthwhile documenting on its own. So in the next video, we're kind of back to normal, where we'll be plugging the Arduplane 3.8 into the computer, and then showing you how to go through all the calibration and setup ready for the first flight. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.